I'm, I'm going to talk to you tonight on Judas kids. Judas kids. Now, in the day and time, as I was putting this together, I began thinking about it. In the day and time we live in, it really amazes me at the people that come to church week in and week out, but they leave the same way they came. They're, church is about growth. It is about change. We need to be growing in the kingdom. We need to be doing these things. But some folks today, and I see this a lot, they treat church the same way they treat their job. But then I put that down and I began to think about that. And I thought, no, not really. They don't treat church the same way they treat their job. Because they wouldn't miss that much work. Yeah, pastor's back, okay? They wouldn't miss that much work. Now, I know I'm talking to the choir. I get that. But they wouldn't, I'm talking about it, just Christians in America today. They wouldn't miss that much work, but they show up, they come and they put in their time, but they complain about everything that's going on and they don't do anything to help the situation. You would think in this day and time that we're living in that people would get tired of living day in and day out without having joy, without having peace, without having hope in their life or happiness. You would think that people would say, I'm tired of living in a hopeless world. I'm tired of living in a life that is less than joyous, and I'm going to start doing something different. I'm going to do anything that I can do to bring joy. Just like I said a while ago, I'm to the point, we are in the last day. I'm to do anything if it says walk march around the house seven times i'm going to march around the house seven times if that will reach my kids then i'm going to do it but i think christians ought to be tired of saying i'm not going to be i want to see miracles i want a miracle I, I'm wanting a miracle. I, I want it to happen in my life. I, I, I don't want to just go through the motions. I don't want to go backing up all the time, but I want to reach out. I want to see people's lives radically changed for the kingdom of God. Now, I think what the problem is a lot of times is that people's response to what life brings them keeps them down and they don't praise God in spite of because I really don't think as I was putting this together and I think about it and I'm talking I know I'm talking to the choir and I'm talking in generals I'm talking about Christians in the world today especially America I don't think they really understand the power of praise you see there's power in your praise a while ago, the first two songs that we sung, you weren't just singing for nothing to do. There was power in what you were doing. If you could see it, there was power that was permeating this place. There is power in praise. You say, Pastor, prove it. Well, okay, ask Joshua about praise. Joshua, what will praise do? Joshua would look at you and say, praise will bring the walls down. You got walls in your life? Start praising God and watch what God will do. He will begin to take the walls down. Ask the three Hebrew boys. All of a sudden, they will take you out of a hot situation and keep you cool in the midst of it. Because guess what? Praise will bring you out of that. Praise will put you... I don't know about you, but here lately, <clears throat> as the weather's cooling down, we all have fires outside. What is it with these places that make roasting sticks that are about a foot and a half long? You got marshmallows and hot dogs and you got a roasting stick that's that long. And you're sitting there by a blazing fire and your hand is getting cooked just like the hot dog is. Can you imagine the intense heat of the three Hebrew boys were having to endure? But because they chose to praise God, even in the midst, I can't stand a foot away from it without burning my hand. But these cats, because they were praising God in this situation, then all of a sudden it didn't bother them. They could sit right in the middle of it and still be okay. Why? Because praise brought that about in their life. Ask Daniel. Daniel, what will praise do? Well, here's what praise does. It makes lions go on fasts. 
They aren't hungry anymore. They can't eat if you praise God, if you begin to praise him. So there's power in praise. And here's the thing about praise. Praise is a producer. See, when you all were praising God, it's producing. It's doing some things. It's creating the atmosphere. Is your singing, King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you. It's creating an atmosphere. Praise is going out and it's changing things. And so tonight, I want us to look in 1 Chronicles 4 and 1. It's just a short text. 1 Chronicles 4 and 1. It says, the sons of Judah were Perez, Hezron, Carmi, Hur, and Shobel. Let me read that again. The sons of Judah were Perez, Hezron, Carmi, Hur, and Shobel. And so we look at this and we see Judah had some sons. And we have to understand that Judah means praise. So in other words, praise had some sons. Now I want us to notice something about this text. There is a father that is present. It talks about Judah, but there is no mention of a mother. So you have the producer, but you don't have the carrier. You don't have the womb. You got the producer. Now, that sounds like some Christians today. Because Judah shows up, prays in a worship service, and praise is looking for a partner. Praise is looking for somebody that will join in. It is looking for a bride. It is looking for a carrier, so to speak. It's looking for a womb to help nurture the seed that is going to be produced, but it can't find one. And here's the thing about Judah, it's not looking for just anybody because some are not attracted to Judah. Some are not attracted to praise because their heart isn't right. Because their motives aren't right. You know what? Everybody that comes to church isn't necessarily coming to church to praise God. Now, you all are. I'm talking about the church down the road. Not really. But not everybody that comes is, is looking for praise. Their motives aren't right. They're... They have their own agenda. That's why some are not growing in kingdom principles. That's why, and hear me tonight, that's why church is boring to them. That's why they spend most of their time on Facebook instead of the book. Because it's boring. They say, I just want, that's why we have to hear in America, they tell you that if you have over a 70-minute service that people get upset and they get bored. Because we just take too much of the precious time. The enemy is beating them down and is wreaking havoc in their life because church is boring to them. Why? Because they refuse to hook up with Judah and consummate their relationship with him. They refuse to hook up with prayer. I'm not going to praise. And there's a lot of reasons maybe they won't. I'm not, I'm not going to praise him. Me and her had a fight on the way to church, and so I'm not going to praise him. 
I'm not going to hook up with praise because they're singing a song I don't like. I'm not going to hook up with praise because it's too loud. I'm not going to hook up with praise because it's too quiet. I'm not going to hook up with praise because I don't like Israel. I'm not going to hook up with praise because I don't like the sound guy. I'm not going to hook up with praise because I don't like this. I'm not going to hook up with praise because I don't like that. I'm not, and so we come in and nothing changes about us whenever Judas saying, hey, if you'll hook up with praise, some things are going to happen in your life. And so I want to give you some, some pointers tonight. I want to give you some five advantages of you hooking up with praise. I, I want to give you five advantages tonight of hooking up with Judah. Because here's what happens when you hook up with praise, it produces an offspring. <laughs> Are y'all ready? The first one, the sons of Judah, the first one it says was Perez. Here's what Perez means. It means breach, cut off, or divider. So whenever you come into a setting and you decide that you're not going to praise God, you're not going to participate, then there's some things that are in your life that do not get cut off. But if you will begin to hook up with praise, I'm sorry, Israel, I don't like that song. It doesn't matter. I'm going to praise him anyway. I, I, why? Because I'm here. I'm not here to be entertained. I'm not here to be entertained. I'm here to entertain the presence of God. And so I'm going to hook up with praise because if I, if I have an offspring of Perez, then all of a sudden when I praise, there's some things that begin to get cut off. He begins to cut away some things in our life that hinders us from progressing in him because we decided to, pray, uh, uh, to praise him. Perez creates a dividing line between you and what the enemy has planned on your life. That's why the enemy will rip you up one side and down the other if you refuse to praise him. But if you will begin to hook up with praise, then all of a sudden it's going to create a Perez and there is going to be a dividing line where God said, hey, the enemy can't touch you while you're praising him so see when I'm there and I'm praising God I'm not praising God for you to look at me I'm not praising God for Israel to be excited because I'm praying I'm praising God because I want him to cut the enemy off from my life and whatever he's trying to do in my life we know the Bible says that the enemy comes to kill steal and destroy but Jesus said I've come to give you life and that more abundantly. And so if Jesus' intention is to give you an abundant life, that's enough to praise him. I don't like that song. doesn't matter. He came to give me an abundant life. I don't care what song you sing. It don't matter. I don't care. You sing whatever song you want. I'm going to praise him. Why? Because it doesn't matter. I'm coming to praise him. See, Don't get too upset at me. But it isn't about me, it's about him. It isn't about you, it's about him. See, this whole praise thing, it isn't about them. It isn't about this, it's about him. And so when we begin to hook up with Judah, we hook up with praise. Then all of a sudden, a Perez is birthed. And as you begin to praise him, there's a cutoff, there's a divider that's happening. And Perez will cut off the tactics of the enemy. See, because that way when you come in and you and your spouse had an argument before you come, if you don't praise, guess what? You're going to leave mad just like you came. But if you will start praising God all of a sudden what the enemy meant to destroy, all of a sudden that will put a divider in that and you'll leave and you'll be hugging and loving on each Now you might get home and have another argument. So when we get up here and we say, let's give him some praise, what are we doing? 
We're saying right then when you're praising him, there's, a, there's something that's happening. There's a cutoff that's happening. And all of a sudden, what the enemy's trying to do, it cuts him off. Not only did he have a son named Perez, but Perez also had a son named Hezron. That means shut in, surround, shield. Isaiah 59, 19 said, So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. So when you begin to hook up with Judah, it will all of a sudden produce a shield in your life. And so when I'm standing over there praising him, things are getting cut off and there's a shield that is happening. And so when the enemy comes in like a flood, all of a sudden the spirit of the Lord is going to lift up a shield against him. And so I begin to praise him. And so when we begin to hook up with Judah, it, put, it produces protection all the way around you. You say, pray for protection. I tell you what, let me say this, praise for prote protection. Begin to praise and all of a sudden protection will come in your life. And all of a sudden you won't even notice what the enemy, you don't even have, I mean, you're just praising God and the enemy's trying to mess with you and you just look at him and say, get out of my way. I got other things I got to be doing right now. I'm too busy praising God. Nothing else really matters to me right now. I don't care how hot it is in here. I don't care how cold it is. I may, I'm praising God. That's all I'm going to do right now. I don't know what time it is. I'm busy praising God. Why? Because because he is putting a shield up and it is changing my life. So we got three more and I got five minutes and that's never going to happen. So when we begin to hook up with praise, it cuts the enemy off and it puts up a divider or a shield. See, you thought it was just making noise. Oh, no, something's happening in the spirit world. And then they got another son named Carmi. That means vine dresser or harvester. Now, we have to understand something. There's a difference in a farmer and a vine dresser. A farmer harvests his own crop. But a vine dresser harvests that which he did not plant. Well, you missed it. Karma is a vine dresser. A farmer harvests his own crop. It's what he put out. A vine dresser harvests that which he did not plant. He didn't plant it, but he's going to harvest off of it. And not only that, he doesn't harvest just when he gets ready because we have to understand that harvest comes in its own season. But when you hook up with praise, it said that it produced a karma. And as a result of your praise, God is going to put you in a season of harvest that you don't even necessarily deserve. You might not deserve it, but guess what? God said, because you hooked up with praise, I'm going to put you in a season of harvest that you're going to get things that you didn't plant you're going to get houses you didn't build. I'm going to bless you coming, and I'm going to bless you going because you hooked up with praise. You hooked up with Judah. The Bible calls this grace. In other words, that fog of God just rolled in, the favor of God. All because you praise, the favor of God comes in on your life. You want the favor of God? Begin to praise him. When I begin to praise him, blessings come that I don't even deserve. Have you ever been blessed and you didn't even deserve it? Oh, come on. I got three people. Anybody ever been blessed? You didn't even deserve it, but you got blessed anyway. Isn't it cool? You're not looking for it, but you get blessed. That's because you hooked up with Judah. 
That's because we didn't have to get up here and say, please, please, please. Would you praise God? Would you please praise God? Would you please? Come on. Would you please? Would you? Come on. Would you do it? Because, I mean, we want to we want to look good. Come on. We Come on. No, it's not because we ask you. It's because you just said, hey, guess what? I'm going to enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. And when I do that, some things are going to happen. And as it does... I'm going to get blessed even when I don't deserve it. You know, it's one thing. It's one thing. If I come and do work for you and I say, I'll paint your house for 500 bucks and you give me $500, I'm not going to leave and say, man, I just got blessed. No, I work my tail off for that. But if you just come up to me and say, I'm just going to give you 500 bucks. Hey, we going to B-dubs, and I'm going to buy for everybody. And then see, I didn't even mean for this to happen, but it did happen. Because all of a sudden, I got blessed. Something I didn't deserve, I got blessed. And then in turn, I'm taking everybody out to b So guess what? They're getting blessed because I get blessed. So all of a sudden, when I'm praising God, not only am I the one that gets blessed, also everybody that's around me gets blessed. See, it's really more about you, more about than just you. It's about everybody around you that's going to get blessed. I'm praising for my kids. I'm praising for my grandkids. I'm praising for my neighbors. I'm praising for my coworkers. I'm praising for my family. I'm pra- not for me, but I'm praising for for others. Why? Because I want to see them get blessed. And we thought it was just praise. Are we doing okay? Let me give you a word. Quit quit waiting for your season. Your season is here. Quit waiting. You're going to see it produce. Why? Because you hook up with praise. If this doesn't get you excited, then you need to you, you need to go on YouTube and listen to it till you do get excited. There is a fourth son named her. That means noble, liberty. When you begin to hook up with praise, it will produce liberty. Praise frees us from the opinions of others. I don't like you. I don't care. I don't like how you look. Don't bother me. I don't like your house. Don't matter. I don't like your truck. Those are fighting words there, but... What am I saying? It frees you from opinions of others. You know why people are so down so many times? Because you listen to everybody what their opinion is of you. When you hook up with Judah, your your opinion of me does not matter. Oh, I wish everybody could live that way. Because you know what? My opinion of you, and I love every one of you, but my opinion of you should not matter. Well, Pastor, I want to impress you. You Don't impress me. Impress him. Impress him. How are you going to do that? Praise. Hook up with praise. So liberty comes. Freedom comes when you begin to praise. So it produces freedom. The Bible says who the Son has set free is free indeed. But we have to realize that the freedom isn't free. Because sometimes even in the midst of your praise, you got to fight to be free. You got to fight to be free. Sometimes you you have to have some fight. Can can I be really transparent with you tonight? I want to be transparent with you. I don't feel like praising every time I come in here. (laughs) You're scaring me. (laughs) I don't feel like praising him every time. But praise is what I do. 
And I know when I began to hook up with Judah, then something happens. And there is a her that is being produced. There's a freedom that comes. Not because I felt like it, but because I just did it, because I knew what it would bring. See, I know what praise brings. Praise brings more than just excitement to the room. Praise brings, yes, he inhabits the praises of his people. And when God comes, everything changes. I get that. But it produces some things. And it produces freedom. And so you got to fight, though, sometimes. Sometimes when I come in and I don't feel like i gotta, I, I got to get free from distractions. I got to get free from disruptions. I got to get free from disappointment. I got to, I got to get free, and the only way I can do that, I got to fight my way through it. I've had to come in here before and just fight my way through it because I didn't feel like it, but I knew if I hooked up with Judah, then everything is going to be all right. Because you have to understand something about your praise. Your praise is a weapon. It's a weapon. The word says, you know what? We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers in darkness of this age. Let me say that again. You're not wrestling against each other. No, you thought it was, but it's not. You're wrestling against darkness. You're wrestling against principalities, against powers. You're wrestling against those things. And so when we come in, we understand that praise is our weapon. And so that's how we get through it. We praise our way through it. So you got to learn to praise him through the midst of your adversity. And then the last one is Shobel. That is the embracer of corn, the wanderer, the traveler, the pioneer. Shobel has several meanings, and the first one I want us to look at is the embracer of corn. In the day and time that this text was written, we have to understand that there was not a money system in place. They used the barter system, and the trading system that they used was corn because it was used by the wealthy as a form of currency. And so when you hook up with praise, it produces a shobel. Are you ready? God will use new ways to make you wealthy. And I'm not talking just about money. He will bring, he will use a shobel to bring you into a position to be all that he has called you to be. All because you hooked up with praise. Shobel also means a wanderer, a traveler, a pioneer. Israel, come on up. When you begin to praise, you're going to find yourself going places that you have never been before. You're going to find yourself having doors being opened to you that no one else can close. I, I like those doors that nobody else can close because... You hooked up with Judah. And so hear me tonight, and I want you to stand to your feet. There's power in your praise. There's power in your praise. And so tonight, I dare you to praise God. Even in the midst of your circumstances, I dare you to praise Him. In the midst of your turmoil, I dare you to praise Him. I dare you to praise God in the midst of your confusion. I dare you to praise God in the midst of your Christ. Pastor, I'm going through. I dare you, if you start praising God, you will start seeing things break off in your life. I don't know about you, but you know what? I've got to praise him. Why? Because he has blessed me. Because he is the almighty God. Because he cares for me. Because he forgave me. Because he don't, you don't have to prod me to praise him. You don't have to coax me. I'm going to praise him just because somebody in the house give him some praise in this place why because there is power in your praise